Hello. Thank you for being with us today and for reaching out globally. I am Mary Jo Ryan and King. This is Marcia Myers Hello. and Patricia Johnson. Today we're going to be sharing with you God's love, joy, and peace, which keeps us in God's hope. And hope is a very good thing. So, Pat, would you please share about God's love? I would love to. You know, there are many versions of love. Uh, we can say we love somebody. We can say we love anything. Love come in very, very many versions. Um, I can say that I love my pink shoes, and I love my pink shoes so much that I wear them more than others. But I really don't love my pink shoes. I like my pink shoes, but I don't love my pink shoes. Or I can say I love my husband, Pastor Ken Johnson, of 46 years, that I really do love very much. But when I met Pastor Ken, or Ken Johnson, uh, 46 years ago, uh, I was attracted to him. Something about him got my attention. And then we started to talk and got to know each other. And before I knew it, we had a relationship. And during that time of our relationship, it grew and it grew. And then I, I knew that I loved Ken Johnson. So love comes with a relationship. A relationship is key to the true love, the true love of God. And that's the way the Lord sees us. He wants us to have a relationship with him yeah. and to love him just like that. With a relationship, you got to know him. You got to talk to him. You got to spend time with him. You have to listen to him. So that's what he wants from us is to love him with a relationship. A lot of people love their pet. Well, a pet can't talk back to you, but they show affection. They spend a lot of time with you. And they spend so much time until they have developed a relationship with their, their owner. And the owner have developed the relationship with the pet. So relationships are so key. And you know, isn't that a good God that would teach us how to love one another? Because you know, he created love. We didn't know how to love until God showed us. We didn't even know the meaning of love until Jesus gave us the definition of love at the cross and with sacrificing. So we're just so blessed to know love. And I just wanted to share that with you today that love comes in so many ways. But the true love, the true love, true love comes with the relationship. It comes with the relationship with your spouse, with your children. Even with my children, my children and I spend a lot of time together on the phone. I have three daughters, and we talk all the time. I know my daughters. My daughters know their mother. We have a relationship, and that's important. So they have known, they know how to move on in the, in the spirit of love because they've been taught about love because they've received love from their parents. So I'm just so thankful that I am aware of the love of God and that love is so special. And a lot of people toss love around. They say, well, I love this and I love that and I love them. And, but a lot of times we're just saying that because we really like something a lot more than we truly love something. But if you have a relationship, then it's true love. And that comes from God. And you know, God want us to have that, as I said before. God want us to have that with his son, Jesus Christ, a relationship because he has a relationship with his son, his son has a relationship with us, and his son wants that relationship with us. So love is great, God is good, and God is love. What do you think about that, Mary Jo? Isn't that a blessing? God is love. So what yes, do you think about is. joy? He's joy, he's a God of joy too. Yes, he is a God of joy. Jesus came to give us joy. You know, the scripture, that's most often used at funerals is a 23rd Psalm. And have you ever noticed how many reasons it gives for being joyful? Have you ever noticed how many reasons it gives for being joyful? Yes, God wants us to have joy. The Lord is my shepherd. The joy of having a personal relationship with Jesus. I shall not want the joy of supply. He makes me to lie down in green pastures, the joy of rest. He leads me beside the still waters, the joy of refreshment. He restores our soul, the joy of healing. Jesus is our great physician. By his stripes, we 
are healed. Yes. The yes. doctor factors one thing, but God's factor is something else. My mother was in the hospital for a couple of weeks, in and out of a coma. The doctor at one point told us she only had maybe perhaps two days, and she would be leaving this existence. But you know, even though I contacted her church, she was considering a casket, the very next day the doctor came in, mom was sitting up in bed, singing. And the doctor said, is that the same lady I saw yesterday? She can go home. And she did come home, and she lived several more years. Yes, if you have a negative doctor factor hanging over your head, just want you to know that it's a God factor that matters. Give it to Jesus. Ask him for your healing. In fact, we're going to ask right now in Jesus' name for your healing. Because Jesus is our great physician. And in him, all healing can take place. So forget the doctor factor and depend upon God. It's his factor that counts. He guides us in the path of righteousness, the joy of his guidance. For his name's sake, his purposes bring joy. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Yes, Jesus has always had plans for me, and he has plans for you. For this is our God, our God forever and ever. He will be our guide, even to death and beyond for all eternity. Even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we need fear no evil. Amen. The joy of knowing we are protected. Jesus is our hiding place, preserving us from trouble. He keeps us surrounded with his songs of deliverance. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. My heart rejoices in him because I trust in his holy name. He is with us. His rod and his staff comfort us. His faithfulness gives joy. In the presence of our enemies, he prepares a table for us, knowing he is preparing our way, helps us to remain joyful. He anoints our head with oil. Our cup runs over. The joy of abundance. Jesus' mercy and loving kindness brings joy as they follow us each day of our lives when we're walking and talking with Jesus. We will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. With him, we are eternally secure. As we keep our hope in Jesus, we have great joy. I have trusted him since my youth. He has upheld me from birth. Yes, when no one else knew who I was supposed to be or where I was supposed to be, Jesus always knew. My desire is to continually praise and exalt him my Lord and my Savior, to my last fleeting breath. Yes, I am joyfully his, and I'm grateful for the blessed assurance of John 3, 16, that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever should believe within him should not perish but have eternal life. What joy does that give? Yes, it does. Romans 8, 1, it says, There is therefore no condemnation, for those who are in Christ Jesus. Once we've asked Jesus into our heart, there's no condemnation. We are forgiven, washed, whiter than snow. Yet it fills me with joy to know that when this mortal body is laid down, yes, it does, it fills me with joy to know that when this mortal body is laid to rest, I will be face to face with my Jesus for all eternity in heaven. MRC is going to share about the peace this gives. Yes, there is a peace, a peace of God. Whenever I hear that word peace, I remember a statement that I heard someone say about that. They said that peace is some, is, means nothing lacking, nothing broken. Now, the Jewish greeting, shalom, carries that idea with it. It means complete and whole, tranquil, tranquility in your soul. It's, it's a knowing inwardly that no pressure, no circumstances can take your, your peace. When a person is dominated by that peace, there's an inner stability that lets them conduct themselves peaceably. 
no more um, falling apart in the middle of nerve-wracking circumstances, no more uh, uh, hurting in the middle of turmoil because you just fall back on Jesus' on Jesus's peace. Peace is one of those really wonderful benefits that we get as a believer in Jesus. Jesus said in John 14, 27, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives you do I give you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither be afraid. On the last program, I spoke about the emptiness and the loneliness that I had ex been experiencing before I accepted the Lord as my Savior. When I made Jesus as my Savior, when I believed in my heart that he died for me, he died on the cross, shed his blood, that he rose again, and that he's alive, there was a peace that came, the peace with God. Now, this peace with God is, a, is something that, we, that takes away the emptiness. It takes away the loneliness. And it, it made me not be his enemy anymore. When I say that, I mean no longer did I want to do what I'd been doing, drinking, smoking, not such a nice mouth. I became his child. I became a member of God's family. Romans 5.1. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. This peace with God is a result of a new eternal relationship that you can have like I have. Nothing lacking, nothing broken. There's another facet of peace that I have been very blessed to have experienced over and over again. It's that peace that you know in the middle of trials, like when you're raising your children, one of, my children, one of my children decided to run away. Another one tried to take their life. Job situations where you have anger and turmoil, relationships with family, with friends, those can cause a lot of heartbreak sometimes. But probably the place that I experienced that peace of God the most was the time I spent sitting in the hospital with my husband and taking care of him at home when he was fighting with his health. We prayed, we stood, we believed. But that peace, that peace in the middle of all that enveloped me and kept me, kept my mind clear, kept me in tranquility, gave me a peace in my heart that was absolutely supernatural. Philippians 4, 7 says, And the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your heart and your mind through Jesus Christ. When you trust Jesus as your Savior, you can experience that wonderful peace no matter what's going on in your life. There's another peace. This is an unlimited peace. This is the peace that will be established when Jesus comes back to establish his kingdom here on earth. Then he will be the ruler. Isaiah 9, 6 says, Unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government will be upon his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. All around us today, we're hearing people cry out for peace. But the only true peace is the peace you have with God. We can walk in peace with God when we become his family member. We can walk in the peace of God, being enveloped in that peace when all around us is falling apart then we can walk in that peace eternally here on earth when we become a member of that kingdom that Jesus is establishing here. Peace, total being, healthy in body, spirit, soul, prosperity in every area of your life, security that's associated with God's presence, peace associated with having come to Jesus Christ and walking in faith. Yes, this sounds like nothing lacking, nothing broken to me. Romans 15, 33. Now, the God of peace be with you all. Amen. Now, you may have been sitting there thinking, how do I come to this peace? How do I come to this joy, to this love that these ladies are talking about? The way to that is through Jesus Christ. The way to him is by recognizing the fact that you need a savior that you're a sinner, accepting the fact that Jesus shed his blood so that you could be washed clean of your sins, 
than asking him to forgive you. When you do that, you can become his kid. You can become a child of God. Such a blessing it is to know this King of Kings, this Lord of Lords. Now, if you'd like to accept Jesus as your Savior, would you follow me in this prayer? Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you that you have shown to me that I am a sinner, that I need to be washed in your blood. Would you forgive me of my sin? I believe in my heart, and I will confess with my mouth that Jesus died on the cross, that he rose again. I will believe in my heart that he has brought me to the kingdom. I love you, Jesus. Lead me, guide me. Thank you for my salvation. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Pat has another song for us. Hallelujah. We know God is a great God. Greater, greater, greater than we can imagine. And I know most of you probably know the name of this song is called How Great Thou Art. He's awesome. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
Thank you, Pat. Yes, hallelujah to my great, great God. You know, Jesus came to give us joy and to give it to us in abundance. God is love, and love is God. And with love, and with joy, and with peace, and with having Jesus in our hearts, we have hope, and hope is a mighty good thing. Perhaps you've been feeling a bit hopeless lately. Don't want you to feel that way, because with God there's always hope. His holy word, the Bible, is worth full of scripture, full of verses that tell us about God's love and hope and joy and peace. Such as in Psalm 33, Verses 20 and 21, our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. For our heart, our heart shall rejoice in him because we have trusted in his holy name. Yes, people will let us down. People will disappoint us. People will discourage us. But our God never does. Our God is there, steadfast, loving us. And if you just receive Jesus in your heart today, you thoroughly enjoy this beautiful song that Pat sang for us, the peace that Marcia was sharing about, and the joy. We want you to know that today could be the very first day of the rest of your life. Make it count. You know, every one of us gets 86,400 seconds a day. In the beginning of the day, the, what... God has given to us as a gift. What we give back to him at the end of the day is our gift back to him. So stay in God's holy word at least five minutes a day. And when you're in his word five minutes a day, it's going to grow because the more time you spend with a friend, and Jesus, wants, he calls us friends, he wants to be your best friend. The more time you spend with a friend, the more time you want to spend with a friend. Find yourself a Bible teaching, preaching church. A Bible teaching, preaching church. Get out with like-minded people. Yes, you too can stay in love and joy and peace and be ever hopeful in Jesus. We love you, but most importantly is that Jesus loves you more. Yes. And then we'll be back every first and third Monday at 2.30. God bless you until we meet again.